We're standing in front of a brand new dispensational chart this afternoon. I put it up here, it's a little smaller and can get it into the camera a little better. The other one I've been standing in front of for 50 years and I love the old chart. I have to have those charts behind me to teach you, to show you what part of time that we're in and talking about when we're discussing a message. We're studying biblical hermeneutics and we're using three textbooks. We're using uh, Hartel's Principle of Bi Biblical Hermeneutics and Lewis Burkhoff Principle of Biblical Interpretation and Biblical Hermics, Hermeneutics by Milton S. Terry. These three books we're using, along with the Bible, of course, is our main textbook. But we have to lay things out sometimes where you can understand it. Marilyn, when she, when we met, she said that she'd always been praying to find an Indian and a cowboy and and somehow learn more about the Bible. Well, she got all of it. And uh, got a lot of it. We went to church three or four times a day on Sunday and in three or four different classes. I was teaching all over Valley Baptist Church. And she would always say, what time, who's, what, where is this? What, what time are we talking about? Is this before Noah, after Noah? Is it this Adam's time or where is this? Mosaic law or whatever. Well, that chart behind me here lays it all out. Lays it all out. Now tonight, we're going to, I'm going to read to you some things out of Burkhoff's book on biblical interpretation, but then we're going to go back in the book of Genesis. When we go back in the book of Genesis, the time period we're talking about there to begin with is an eternity past, not in time. Now, Mr. Burkhoff says, the necessity of the study of hermeneutics follows several considerations. Sin darkened the understanding of mankind and still exercises a pernicious influence on his conscious mental life. Therefore, special efforts must be made to guard against error. You can use the Bible like a tool, like a screwdriver, like a hammer. And you can use the Bible to teach what you want to, buy, want to, what you want to teach. And you can go and you can find scripture in the Bible to teach anything that you want to teach. Soul sleeping, there is no hell, all of these things that they do teach. You can teach that Jesus Christ is not the Son of God if you ignore three quarters of the Bible. But you can do that. Jehovah's Witnesses do that. Islam does that. Islam has wrested the Bible tremendously. And yet they say the Bible is corrupted. The Bible is corrupted because they corrupted it. And many men have corrupted. Jehovah's Witness, the Mormons, Seventh-day Adventist, Catholic Church especially. The Catholic Church probably would wish that there would never a Bible because that way they could, their people would know that, would not know that they're wrong and contrary to the Word of God. Men differ from one another in many ways that naturally cause them to drift apart mentally. They differ, for instance, in intellectual capacity, an aesthetic taste, moral quality, resulting in a lack of spiritual affinity with one another. And we could go into each one of those details. In intellectual attainment, being more educated and otherwise uneducated, and in nationality, Ethnic background has a lot to do with how you look at the scripture. With the corresponding difference in language, forms of thought, customs, and morals. The study of hermeneutics is very important for future ministers of the gospel because 
The intellect, intelligent study of the Bible only will furnish them with the material which they need for construction of their theology. When I put the church history chart up here over this one, I show you the evolution of theology, how theology evolved among the world. Now in the Bible, evolution didn't evolve. But when people went away from the scriptures and away from the Bible and away from biblical hermits, the Bible is not their basis. The Bible is a bouncing board to teach what they want to teach. Herbert Armstrong, Charles Taze Russell, Judge Rutherford, Joseph Smith, Brigham Young. They quoted a lot of the King James Bible, but they said there was another witness, which is the Book of Mormon and the Doctrines and Covenants and Pearl of Great Prize, which were on equal standing with the Bible. Islam holds up the Quran, the Holy Quran. The reason why they call it the Holy Quran, there's nothing holy in it, is because they want to copy the Holy Bible. Because the Bible is holy. Every sermon a young minister preach, preaches ought to rest on solid, exegetical, hermeneutic, hermeneutical foundation. This is one of the greatest problems of today. I remember a long time ago. Brother Martin Cannon's son was studying for a Sunday school class. And he was reading very quickly his King James Bible. And he was talking about the frogs, the plague of frogs in the book of Exodus in Egypt. And he read this and he said, and the land sank. The Bible says that the land stank. It smelled bad. But he said, the land sank. It, it was sinking down. The land was sinking. That's the kind of biblical interpretation we have problems with. Instructing the young people in God's churches and in family visitation, they are often called upon unexpectedly when somebody comes to interpret passages of Scripture. Well, doesn't the Bible say this? And then we go off on this rabbit trail. On such occasions, a fair understanding of the law's interpretation will aid them in materially interpreting the Word of God. It's part of your duty to know enough of the Word of God to let the Word of God defend itself. The Word of God does defend itself, but you have to know how to use that Word to allow God to defend His own Word. We have theological fads. We have all types of heresies in the world today. There is a large group of people out there that believe that when you die, your soul goes to sleep. If you aren't good enough, that you won't ever wake up. You'll just keep on sleeping for eternity upon eternity upon eternity. That's what we call the doctrine of soul sleeping. And, because, and they try to use the scriptures to say, and he fell asleep. His body fell asleep. His soul and spirit were not asleep. Luke, the 16th chapter, tells us that. He was gathered unto his ancestors, his family. Yes. Was he gathered unto them in the graveyard, or was he gathered unto them in paradise? Ephesians, the Apostle Paul, and I read this before, but we need to look at it again. We just can't read the Bible enough. That's, it, you need to interpret it correctly. Paul writing this church, I mean this letter, which people call, says it was the church at Ephesus. This, this letter is a circular letter. It is not to the church of Ephesus. The church of Ephesus sent it out. That's where it was copied. And it became known as this, 
Ephesians letter, but if you look in your column there where it says to the churches in Ephesus, it actually will say that's not in the original language, and it isn't. The third chapter, the Apostle Paul starts out writing this circular universal letter, and he uh, says, for this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. This is a Gentile letter, people, a circular, universal, general, Gentile letter for us. Indeed, you have heard of the stewardship, the uh, house law, the administration. As we look back here, we see different administrations in God's kingdom at different times all the way over there to eternity future, from eternity past. We're going to look at that, some of these details. The administration of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, that by revelation there was made known to me the mystery, as I wrote before in brief. The mystery, the secret. The Bible is a secret to most of the world. It is a mystery. People say, I don't believe the Bible. Well, they never read the Bible. I don't, I don't trust in, in, in that. Oh, men wrote that book. Well, men did write it, but the author was God. We believe in the plenary inspiration of the Word of God and, and the verbal inspiration of the Word of God. And I believe that the Word of God in the original languages is inspired, tense, mode, and voice, and person. And you look at it, if you know those languages, it is outstanding and beautiful when you see that. And by referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the secrets of Christ into the mystery of Christ, which in other generations was not made known to the sons of men as it now has been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets in the Spirit. We live now in this church age, the administration of the church age, right here. The church age, the church was called out from the seashores of Galilee. It's an old, an old Greek word, which means one's called out. They used it in the Greek and Roman city-states, part of the empire. Every city-state was a democracy that elected the officials, and that official was a bona fide legal assembly, an ecclesia. And the ecclesia did business for the kingdom, for their lord, for their master, for the ruler, for their Caesar, for the empire. That's the ecclesia. And that's the ecclesia that the Lord called out. We had a lap link there. We were changing from the law of Moses to that which the law of Moses turned to. We had the promise to Abraham with the Egyptian bondage. We now have the law by Moses. And then Moses writes down many, many words. The first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, were written by Moshe, Moses. The word Moses means to rescue or to grow out. Then all of those laws should have pointed them to the Hamashiach, the Messiah, King of Israel. And it did, but they did not listen. It did, but they did not listen. When Jesus came, John the Baptist says, Behold, the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. He said the gospel, uh, the uh, prophets, and the law were unto the preaching of John. After that, the Psalms, the prophets, and the law were unto the preaching of John. And then after that, the kingdom of God was preached, the kingdom of God. <clears throat> Paul went on to say that 
in which generations passed, men sought to understand those dark prophecies of the Old Testament. But they did not. Angels wanted to know the story. To be specific that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The gospel is the, the news of the coming and birth of the Messiah, his miraculous ministry, his death, burial, and resurrection. The Jehovah Witnesses have Jesus never been raised from the dead. Of course, Jesus, according to them, was Michael the Archangel, the first creation of God. That's bad hermeneutics. That's bad interpretation. Paul said, of which I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me according to the working of his power. To me, the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles, the unsearchable, the untrackable riches of Christ. And to bring to light what is the administration of the church age, of the mystery which for ages has been hidden in God, who created all things, in order that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known through the church, to the rulers and authorities and heavenly places. Angels listen to me preach. They do. I think the old Satan is upset every time I preach God's word. I expose him for what he is. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose, God's eternal purpose. That's it. You look at God's eternal purpose and then you can understand what's going on right now. Right now, you can understand what's going on. For he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and confidence, and access through faith in him. Go on down a little further. And it says that we may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth or square. And to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled up with all the fullness of God. That's what something the Russellites don't understand this, the love of God. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Islam, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses. That God's son was brought, God, Jehovah, was brought into this world to save you from yourself and from sin. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, beyond everything that we might dream of, according to the power and works within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, eon, tony, eon, tony, eon, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, ages upon ages upon ages, that word in Hebrew is olam. That means a long time. Now let's go back to our textbook and go a little bit further walking through God's beautiful instructions. On page number nine, down at the bottom third of the page, in eternity past, heaven and earth were created. In eternity past, heaven and earth were created. Now, in the Hebrew Bible, which I have right here, I've said this many times, and I think some of you can memorize it and probably repeat after me. But here we are in another study saying the same thing. So these must be real important words. 
very important words because so many studies go back to this. Now, <clears throat> we have a religious fact today that the earth is only 6,000 years old. Well, that would be very well if it was only 6,000 years old. The Bible said that, but that's not what the Bible says. Now, Genesis 1 and 1 is something that happened in eternity past. John 1 and 1 goes back further in time than anything else. It says, in RK, ain't whole logos, kai whole logos, ain't throw stone thing on, kai whole logos, ain't deals. In singular beginning, kept on being the Jehovah, and the Jehovah kept on being an inseparable part of the Godhead because the Jehovah kept on being God. We know what John 1.14 says, Kai Halogo starts again on the soul. And the word of Jehovah, flesh he became and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory of the glory of the only begotten of the Father. The only begotten. There isn't any more. Only one time. Hapox false. Jesus Christ only died once on the cross. The Catholic Church crucifies him every Mass. Genesis 1 and 1 now, from the Hebrew text. Barashith bara elhim ephashamayim weat ha'arts. Barashith, that first part of that word there, that faith there, the ba, that means in, preposition. Rosh, it means head or Extremity, way back yonder, beginning. But it's got a towel on the end of it. The towel on the end of it makes it plural. It makes it plural. This is the old Hebrew plural. So how we should be translating this is in one of beginnings. In one beginning. Now, John 1 and 1 goes back to a different beginning. That's where nothing else was except God and God only. Now we come to a different beginning. <clears throat> we come to a period, a period of eternity in which God created. Bara means he had created. Now, your King James Bible and most of your Bibles say that he, the earth was, or in the beginning, was. This is, if you translate this was, you missed the ball, period. You missed it. This isn't was. This is, be, this is created. <clears throat> All right. In one beginning, in one of the beginnings, he had created, third person, nice and singular, cow, perfect. He had created, this is the done deal, people. He had created Elohim, et hashemayim. Et there is a sign of the direct object, means there's power, energy going that way, and it means hashemayim. Hashemayim means the uplifted waters. Everything above the earth, hearts. Everything above the earth is the universe. All those stars out there, if you're looking out there tonight, you look outside and there's <clears throat> millions of stars. That's what was there. This is when it happened. In one of the beginnings, God had created the heavens. It's done. It's finished. It's not in process. <clears throat> This Hashemayim here, you could translate it universe. It means uplifted water or heavens. It means everything above the earth. Everything above the earth. But the earth wasn't created yet. He created everything else and then he put earth exactly in the right place. We have Ta'aretz and the earth. Why did it say universe and then the earth? Because God did create the universe first and then he put the earth in exactly the right place. To sustain life, he is going to deal with the whole cosmos through that little old planet earth. That little heart. This is, this is a very important place. 
This is where God would be born in person of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Through the seed of the woman. And then in verse number 2, we'll get to that in a few moments. On page 9, it says, Mr. J. Edwin Hartell, Heaven and earth were created. Genesis 1 and 1, it says in the beginning, it doesn't say in the beginning, it says in one of the beginnings, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the King James says he created, God created the heaven and the earth. It's heavens, plural, and the earth, singular. This was the world that then was in eternity past. The world that then was, that's the world that was created in eternity past. A long, long time ago. I told you in, in other messages that up here about 20 miles that way, there is a grove of old, old trees. Those trees are old. They go back to eternity past. Seven to twelve thousand B.C. Before Christ. They have rings on those trees. Every year has a ring. And they lap those trees and they found them. I lived here in Fish Lake Valley when they were discovered. The age of them was discovered by a man by the name of Shulman. I, and that was 1958, that was a long time ago. 1958, he went up there in that, in that grove of trees and he began to cut trees down and saw them up and started counting the rings and then he realized that he run into something real old. He cut down living trees that were five and 6,000 years old. That's back in eternity past, people. And then they found trees that were much older than them, and they could count the rings and look at them and find a similar climate. Trees that went back and back and back and back further. The carbon dating they had begun, uh, the bristlecone pines corrected the carbon dating. They corrected the dates when Vesuvius erupted to the exact month almost, a year of course. It showed that ice age that was created by the eruption of that volcano. Those rings are records that go back into eternity past. I don't understand all of that, but I know that it exists. Years, years and years. You know what time that we live in is all, live in is just a marked off piece of eternity, people. We live in the church age and it's just a marked off piece of eternity. We're living here, we're talking about eternity past. This was the world that then was. The world that Lucifer was over. You know, in the Word of God, there are two Edens. The Eden that Lucifer reigned from, uh, it's a throne room, and the uh, Eden that Adam reigned from. Epitase gaze upon this earth, El Haaretz, upon the earth. The world that then was. Second Peter 3 and 6, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. There is no date or information, no calendar for the original creation of God. 
we must distinguish between the word create and make and out and it says here that God made it out of nothing ex nihil now actually everything that has been created came out of God and God is not nothing God created that that which is invisible or visible out of the invisible by faith we believe that Genesis 1 and 1 happened we go back to Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28 as we have up here Isaiah 14 12 through 18 and Ezekiel 28 and we can tell what happened to eternity past just go and do that let's go back and look for a moment Isaiah 14 first Isaiah the 14th chapter Verse number 12. How you have fallen from heaven. Heaven. This is the heavens above. The throne of God. O star of the morning, O Halela, son of dawn. You have been cut down to earth. You have weakened the nations. What nations? The animal kingdom that was on the earth, the what we might call the botanical kingdom that was on the earth. You go back, you start studying archaeology and you study the fossils and things. Something was going on back then. We find out what happened back then. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven and I will raise my throne above the stars of God, the angels of God. And I will set at the mount of the assembly in the recess of the north. You go all the way up to the north of the part of the earth and go up into the third heaven. That's where God abode is. I will send above the heights of the clouds and will make myself like the most high. Nevertheless, you will be brought down to Sheol, to the recesses of the pit. Those that see you will gaze at you and will ponder over you, saying, Is this the man? who made the earth tremble. The destruction of the earth at that time was horrible. That's why we have fossil fuel today. This is where it came from. Who shook the kingdom? Who made the world like a wilderness? And overthrew its habitated places with animals and groves who did allow his prisoners to go home. Now, Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel, the 28th chapter. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up the lamentation over the king of Tyre. Now, this is a dual prophecy, just like the other one was in Isaiah 14. And say to him, Thus saith the Lord God, you have the seal of perfection. God doesn't create anything in flux. He creates perfect things. Lucifer was created perfect. Hilel. Full of wisdom and perfect and beauty you were. In Eden, the garden of God. This is the other Eden, way back yonder now, to Eden. Every precious stone was your covering, the ruby, the toaz, the diamond, and the barrel, and the onyx, and the jasper, and the lapis, and the azula, and the turquoise, and the emerald, and the gold of the workmanships of your settings and sockets was in you on the day that you were created. They were prepared, and you were the anointed cherub. Satan is, was a cherub. who covers. I placed you there. You were the holy mountain of God. You walked amidst the stones of fire. You were blameless in your ways from the day that you were created until unrighteousness was found in you. Genesis 1 and 2 now. Genesis 1 and 2. Let's go read that. That's the next thing. Satan's rebellion. Genesis 1 and 2. We Horus and the earth. That little we in front of it, that's a conjunction, page 253. Ha, page 206. 
in Brown Driver Ridge. And then Everett's page 76 in the same Brown Driver Bridge. Hathiyah. She had become third person feminine singular cow perfect. She had become tohu wavohu wuhoshik el panei tohom. She had become total desolation and destruction and a wasteland and darkness hovered over the faces of the deep to home. And then it says, Ruah Elohim Merkachet El Penei Hamayim. And Spirit God, the Holy Spirit of God, began to suffer over, mourn over, and to brood over the faces of the waters. And that's when God began to prepare the earth for man. Another ruler. Another executive that will rule from Eden, the throne. By the way, the word Eden means uh, deities. Deities like they have in king's palaces. Caviar. Oysters. All types of game and fowl. Deities. That Eden that God placed Lucifer in had all those deities. And the one that God placed Adam in had all the luxury of life in it. All the luxurious things of life. Not oysters and not caviar, but he had every kind of fruit there was, and it had fruit without thorns on it. Go out there and try to pick oranges. You will to get stuck lemons, you're going to get stuck with sharp spines. The beautiful flowers that you see now, the roses and everything, were without thorns. I believe that everything in that garden, all the beautiful array of fruits and flowers were all edible and nutritious. But something happened. Satan's first rebellion, Genesis 1 and 2, Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28. The earth became without form and void and darkness was upon the faces of the deep and spirit God moved upon the water the face of the water the writer says the word was is should not be translated was but became in verse number two as I told you third person feminine singular cow perfect she had become Isaiah 45 and verse 18 says, Thus will said the Lord God that created the heavens, that God in himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it, not in tohu wavohu. It wasn't created that way, people. He formed it to be inhabited. Perfect. But it became a chaos. I am the Lord, and there is none else, he says there in Isaiah 45 and 18. The earth was prepared for man, Genesis 1 and 3 onward. In verse 3, we are actually verse number 2, the spirit is brooding over the faces of the waters. The headship of Lucifer is taken from him because of his arrogance and pride and sin. And it was given to the first man of the home. Adam was the first as man, but second in person. For Satan was the first head. Lucifer was the first head of all the creation of God. You've got to get this in your mind. If you, if you don't get this, you're not going to get anything else further on down the line. This is the necessity. This is a stepping stone. This is the foundation for anything else. If you don't understand this, you can't get anything else. It'll be all catty and helter-skelter. Satan's headship was passed on to Adam. The blessing of God will now rest upon a renewed creation that was prepared for Adam. Now, in Genesis, the third chapter, we find a terrible catastrophe. 
man's subjection to Satan. The one who marred the first creation mars the new creation. Adam identifies himself with Eve's sin and sin enters into the human race and through Adam we all sin. Jesus identified himself with our sin and brought salvation into the whole world, universe, people. Written in the close of this chapter is a provision of covering for sin in the skins of animals that had been slain. Something innocent died for the guilty. Blood was shed. The entire race was brought into subjection to Satan. We have him in our blood from that time onward. I don't like it, do you? I don't like to sin, but I do it because I'm human. I'm human, but Christ, the Holy Spirit, lives in me and gives me strength and convicts me of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. That that. Holy Spirit guides us and, and prompts us to follow Him. Mankind was dealt with as a whole in Genesis, the third and fourth chapter. The result of Adam's sin was death, and aging began. Death and aging. We, Adams, the Adam, our father brought misery upon the whole animal kingdom and the human race. Misery. Misery. Death began to reign. Corruption upon the earth. And then we begin After the sin of man, where they were supposed to do good and offer blood sacrifice. What did they do? They, in Genesis 6 chapter, wickedness was all over the face of the earth. And then God is going to do away with all of that and start over again in the flood. The flood at its height had destroyed every land mammal. The flood in its end is a new beginning. Man has a governmental responsibility. Genesis 9, 25 and 26. We're supposed to scatter and multiply. And it tells us what we're supposed to, what's supposed to do. There was a curse that was placed upon the descendants of Cain and Ham, Cain. They would go into the, the land of Canaan, or Palestine, the promised land, Canaan land. And they would build great cities and things, but they would be, become very, very corrupt. Israel would go down into Egypt and come out of there. Now, the construction of Babylon begins in chapter 11. We have more problems. Scatter and multiply. They didn't scatter. Nimrod built a big city and a universal religion. There was already a universal religion. They were supposed to believe in Jehovah. But they went their separate ways. Now, everybody spoke the same language. And something's going to happen now. People have all kinds of weird ideas. The Bible answers all of this. The whole world spoke one language. In Genesis, the 8th chapter, so Genesis, the 11th chapter, they did not scatter. And now we have the confusion of languages and the division of the earth into continents. The land was Pangaea or Gondwana. The American Indian was always here. 
That's one of Ham's descendants. The American Indian was always here. The Chinese were always there. The Africans were always there. Europeans were there. Nobody denies that the Europeans were there. But do you know where the, where the birthplace of humanity was? That's in the Fertile Crescent. Back there where Eden was. And from there they spread out. All over. You just check your DNA and see where it goes back. Back to the Fertile Crescent in the minute destruction of it. Back to Adam and to Eve. Israel is going to begin over here. One man will be the father of all the Jewish people and that will be Abraham. Abraham. God will put a hate in his name, fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Fifth, five is the number of grace. He'll put that in his name and call him Abraham. But it was Abraham when he called him out of the Ur of the Chaldees. One of the most populated, populated, one of the most evil places and educated places. That's where locks and keys and libraries were created there. And told him to go to a land where I show you. He did. But he made his new sidetracked down into Egypt. You have to understand something. Abraham was real. Isaac was a real person. Jacob was a real person. Esau was a real person. Esau will be a thorn, his descendants, and the thorn of Israel's flesh forever, as long as man walk on earth in this age and the ages past. You have to understand Israel is Israel and the church is the church. Abraham is Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Noah was who he was. Jesus talked about all these people. They really lived. Solomon really lived. David really lived. I hope that this message has touched your heart in some special way and that you have illumination that you never saw before from it. We'll stop right here for now and we'll start the next lesson in Biblical Hermeneutics, the science of interpretation of Scripture. Many of people in the world today, especially in evangelical realms, have missed a lot of the boats that we just talked about tonight. They don't understand that God created the heavens and the earth and eternity past. They don't understand that Satan was created perfect and he became Satan. Lucifer was created perfect or Halel and he became Satan the opposer. And that's how we have all this messed up earth. And God created the heavens and the earth and eternity past. And that was the earth that was.